you do? Hello. Welcome you to our first episode. I don't can't ready? believe we're on screen together again. Yeah. First when time was the last time this happened? Six months? Yeah, <laughs> apparently, because that's what you said. I don't remember. <laughs> no, it's six months. How have uh, you been? Since it's been a while. It's been good. It's been good. It's, it's been a busy summer, but I'm happy to be back on screen. Happy to be doing this on a, a program with yourself and about a program like Impact Wrestling. Yeah, I'm glad. I, I mean, I, we don't usually talk about Impact, so it's nice to talk about a different company this time around. And it just, they do a lot for the women. So I said, why not highlight them in some kind of way? So just, that's why we're here. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, welcome to everybody in our chat, whether you're watching us live right now tonight, following down for glory, or you're catching us on a replay on YouTube later on here. We appreciate you tuning in and doing this weekly checking in on all things Impact Wrestling, following the weekly programs and on Friday nights after the live Fight TV pay-per-view events like this. So, um Let's kick it off. What, what did you think of the show as a whole tonight, Ashley? It was better than I thought it was going to be because it, it was a, a good card from what I saw at the beginning anyway when they advertised it. So I was not surprised it was really, really well done. Uh, I was only disappointed with the result of one match. So that's pretty good. How was it for you? Uh, I think I know which match you're talking about. <laughs> um, and by the end of the night, they won me over with it. So I'm okay with that. But... As a whole, I thought the match was really, really well done. I was a little behind on watching, which is why we're a little late kicking off tonight. But I, I got through the whole card, and everything was um, up to the standards that I've come to expect of what Impact Wrestling is putting forward from an in-ring perspective week in and week out. Yeah, and I know I, I wanted to mention it because I think we both missed the pre-show because I was doing the other show, and obviously we're working. But just to name it, uh, we have Brian Myers for the with Happy Note Open Challenge for the Digital Media Championship, and we have the answer from Dirty Dingo of all people. So that was surprising to see. Um, I'll definitely watch the match a little bit later, so I didn't get to watch it. I started with the regular card. Uh, what did you think about having Dingo of all people answer that challenge, though? Yeah, it's, it's great to see him back in a ring on a televised program and, and getting out there again. I know he's been kind of working uh, independently here and there, but seeing him back in the Impact Wrestling ring is an exciting thing. Um, admittedly, I haven't given the Digital Media Championship the uh, respect it deserves since its in, uh, inception. Um, I've missed a lot of kind of the, the pre-show matches and the early matches where it's being defended, but from what I'm seeing on the main programming of the stories that they're building around that those matches definitely, I think, deserve a little bit more attention from me going forward. So to open the pay-per-view, we had the exhibition championship, which was people versus Taz of all people. Is I love this match so much. I'm glad it was the opener. People is killing it. As we can see with this whole match, they had a, like a great pacing too, which I love too. And one of the things that I like the most about the match is like how they kept highlighting and commentary with like certain moves that Cass was making. And it's just like, you know, Cass has been doing this move for like X amount of time and nobody has kicked out of it. But here's people kicking out of it and kicking out of everything that Cass is giving him. Um, but I felt like it was a good showcasing for his people as well. Um, I was surprised by the ending because I just thought it would be a good way to kind of pass the torch to his people. So I was surprised with Cass winning. But um, we'll see how that goes when we you know what new people coming in and sort of happening with him as champion now. Um, but overall, it's pretty interesting to watch. I love the match, though. What did you think about yeah. it? Yeah, no, I, I've loved everything people have done. It's, um, we're at 10 months or nine months since his arrival in Impact now. January at Hard to Kill last year was kind of his first match. Everything Steve has done since getting down there and getting on the roster, and like it's not even just the impact, what he's doing worldwide right now, the matches he's putting on. I have not seen a single match of Ice Speedball that I thought was bad. Going into this, I definitely thought the same as you did that Speedball and Kaz, it's one of those things. Kaz is a special guest coming over from AEW. They made a big deal about that in the, um, the triple threat to set the number one contender last month. Um, or two weeks ago, I guess. So it's not even last month for Victory Road. But um, they definitely kind of set that up that he was the AEW guy coming in. He was mm -hmm. one of these guys coming from an outside perspective. Obviously, Taz has a lot of history in Impact starting out there and being around for as long as he has. Um, but it was, it was a big surprise. And both guys threw their best shots at each other. You had Speedball throwing ultimate weapons out there. You had Taz throwing out cutters left, right, and center. 
Um, that Ultima weapon into a cutter was absolutely ridiculous. Um, that's something I would expect from a Randy Orton, so to see Taz mm-hmm. pull that off, and then the way he just smoothly transitioned it straight into that chicken wing for the finish was... It, it was the chef's kiss, really, it was. Yeah. And this, as a whole, these two just killed it. It was a hot opener. It got the crowd going. What I love about the X Division and, and Impact portrayal of the X Division week in and week out is they always put these guys out there and they always take the show off of the bang. Yeah, I was just it was a good shocking way to open the show more than anything because I didn't expect any champions to begin with, especially when they kept highlighting, oh, you know, people has had nine defenses that he's had so far. He's been successful each one of them, and that's the best you know kind of record they had for an exhibition champion the way he has. So I just the way they would keep going and highlighting everything he's done as champion, I kept thinking you know it it's just gonna keep going. So I was not expecting that result of all results, but. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how Cass matches with, you know, the younger talent that they have in the X Division and Impact right now. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where they go with Cass with this. My first thought was that I mentioned to you in chat before we went on the air um, is that I think we can easily come back and revisit the Cass Chris Saban match that we tried to have a couple months back that Honor No More interrupted and caused to go to a no finish and come back and actually have that what was a futures match, match 20 years ago that they tried to do, you know, now that they're the present, come back and actually have that for an exhibition title and let that match come to a proper conclusion, which I think would be a great way to build this exhibition for, for Taz right now. Start off with that, you let him and save and go out with it um, and build forward from there. Yeah, and now to switch gears, uh, we will go backstage to an interview with Mickey talking about her match with Mia. Uh, but she says, if anything, I'm the torch, and here I'm here, you know, put Bur- Alvin into the ground. But uh, yeah, I think it's interesting the role with Mickey James, too. I, I've been loving what she's doing with the ladies, because even though she's winning the matches, she's still highlighting the ladies from the knockouts division in such a way. And I love what she's doing in this, like, last rodeo, as she calls it, uh, you know, on her way to the knockouts championship. So we'll see how that goes for her. Uh, but then after that, we had Mickey versus Mia. Wow, I enjoyed this match so much. I I was also torn because I love both of them. I was one of those people that was in the Bayon Classic when chanting for Mia to get signed to NXT. Uh, but I've also loved Mickey for quite a while now. So just this was one of those I, I didn't know who to pick, but I knew either way I was going to be happy with the finish. But at the same time, I had a feeling Mickey was going to win it because if you know if Mickey loses, it's the end of the world for her. So I, I had a feeling she was going to win it. But it just it was incredible. Um, one of my favorite parts though was towards the end when Mia just tells her, I'm sorry, and she kicks her with eat defeat when she yeah. does it. But it, you know, it just it doesn't go the way that we expected it to go. But having that part reminded me of like Ric Flair's Shawn Michaels WrestleMania moment, just like I'm sorry, I love you, but I have to hit you anyway. Um, but yeah, I love the chemistry between them and I love having their sports shirts at the at the end when they just hug each other after the match too. And I love the pacing of it, and Mia is just incredible. So I, I, you know, I love was this story for Mickey. I really yeah. do. I love that they're doing this with Mickey. That we don't know how much longer she's got left. I'm sure she has it all signed out down to the, the day at this point, but we don't know. So every match that she's doing in this last rodeo, it could be that night. And I think when it does happen, it should be a surprise that it should come out of nowhere to us. Um, that we we have. Somebody that you don't expect. Somebody that's going to be made from this match. Um, that we're going to get coming in, making a big impact on the on the card, on the roster. Somebody like a Killer Kelly or a Masha Slama that should be a great way to put them over as the next face of the company. Um, I, I definitely like that too with the Mia and Nikki at the end there and the Ika feet. Um, I also love the subtlety of the way that that played out afterwards too though, but she got her too close to the ropes, and um, the way that Mickey kind of awkwardly fell into the ropes, mm-hmm. it, it's a feasible way that she she hit the fall, but she knew the ropes were there because she hit them on her way down, so it was easy for her to like make that stretch to grab it, even if she couldn't actually get the shoulder up, she knew that the rope was there. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I just... The- I love the storyline that they have between them, though. That was pretty well done in this match, too. The other thing in this match that I really loved was the callback to, to Mickey's early time with the kiss on the ropes. And it reminded me of Mickey and Trish feud. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Um, um, 
I want to give a shout out to, to Yum Gravy for joining us there. Mm-hmm. Love to see you in the chat. Thanks for joining along. Um, absolutely there. I think you've got got it bang on that this the way they're building it, the way it's leading, it's either heading right to a knockout title match or it's at least going to head to a number one contenders match where she loses without actually getting the title match. Yeah, most likely. I think it'll be nice to see her just, even if she retires in the, win, by winning a championship, I think that will be cool as well. Uh, I think she's one of those people that I don't mind her doing it because Vicky has worked so hard in the industry and she's working her butt off to get towards that. It's not like she's coming in for one match and that's it. She's building herself up from, you know, from thinking like if she's going to retire to this, it's just incredible to think about. Um, I think it will be interesting to see who she goes uh, against next uh, because we just, obviously we just have Mia tonight. So I think it'll be Nice to see what she had just all shot out too long ago as well. So I, I want to see who she picks next as, as the opponent for her. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who comes up next as the challenge for her. Um, once we once we finished the match, though, and we got that out of the way, um, we basically jumped right into the next match. It felt like there was nothing really in mm-hmm. between, and we jumped right into the knockout tag match there um, as we got Vex versus uh, Taya and Jessica. Uh, with Rosemary along with them, that um, this was a, another surprise for me in the way it went. Um, I'll, I'll let you take the kind of the first call on it though, because you you kind of have a little bit more opinion on the knockouts. To be honest, it surprised me a lot because I'm thinking, you know, we have Dion and Chelsea on one side, and even with the swimmer that's going, it's you have Dion and Chelsea on the other side. So I was not expecting them to lose already like this. That was the part that was the most shocking to me. But at the same time, I love the, how they showed a cohesive beauty between Taya and Jessica in here, uh, especially going back to the history of, like, Rosemary is not in the title match and, like, that she loses her title matches and she, Jessica ends up winning them instead. Uh, so I think that part is always interesting. But it also made me think about uh, the part about the contracts, too, because Chelsea and Deanna, I think Chelsea's contract is about to expire soon. I think so is Deanna's. So they don't have a lot of time left on them. Or I think Chelsea has been, like, a kind of like a short-term contract, so it, it's going to end sometime soon. So that's why I'm, I kept thinking this probably may be the reason why they lost the title match to begin with. So I thought that could have been an interesting point to that. Uh, what about you? Yeah, no, um, it, it's always tough when you look at the contract situations and stuff because Impact does seem to have a lot shorter contracts. They have kind of that flexibility with the talent where they're very fluid in the people coming and going and they allow people opportunities to go and wrestle other places, whether it be AEWs, New Japan, MLWs, um, or, or taking their shots in WWE and NXT, obviously. Um, it, it's something that I think we as fans have a little bit more insight into now than we used to and can look at those things from an outside perspective and see, well, this person's contract is expiring, so they're probably going to lose their match. But it also is an opportunity where maybe they do have a situation like they did last year with Josh, where you know, it, it expired or his visa expired, but they can play that into a story as well that make you think that he's losing because his contract is firing and he's not going to be around. And the next thing you know, it's a surprise return when they actually have, like, the contract re-signed. Yeah. Uh, the match as a whole, though, I definitely enjoy Taya and Jessica's chemistry as a team. I love the look of Vex. I think Chelsea and Deanna just have that look of teammates that especially now that they've got their matching um, outfits and stuff and their matching ring gowns as they come down, they really give that vibe of someone that has been teaming for years and years as opposed to a team that's just formed in the last couple months. Um, All four of these women are extremely talented in the ring. I wouldn't expect anything less than what we got. I love Jessica Havoc as a performer and an artist in that ring, and I'd love to see her get an opportunity. I'm super happy for her to actually win a title here. Getting the opportunity to work in a tag team with Taya Valkyrie, I think, has nothing but a, a, a limitless ceiling to what she can achieve being alongside someone with Taya Valkyrie's experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, overall, I, I really love the story that we're telling in the ring with, with both teams. Um, it just made me wonder about the future of Chelsea and Diana in the company, which I hope they still keep them somehow because I feel like they're, they'll be beneficial to, the, to the, not only the company, but for them as well because... Diana has been one of the people that has been highlighted so on impact since joining them. And I think they could just keep going on with that because she's doing incredible over there. It's just like, why try maybe a change when you're doing it well here? 
uh, or maybe give NXT a second try. Who knows with uh, Triple H in charge now? But I feel like I like what she's doing here with Chelsea, so I don't want it to end yet. Yeah, I think um, Chelsea for sure with Cardona being there and Myers being there and they just formed their team and growing in that sense. I don't think they've been doing enough with that trio since they formed up. So I think it's got to be something either they're waiting for the contract statuses to be confirmed or um, they just were afraid to build it too much because of the contract. So I'd love to see more come out of that trio. Beyond absolutely, the Virtuals has been a staple of the knockout division for the last couple of years. She's been the headliner on so many of these shows that for her to take a chance and go somewhere else and, you know, maybe AEW is knocking on her door and trying to bring her in, especially with the changes that are possibly coming there. But I think Deanna would be in her best interest to keep going and just become that next Mickey or Gale to run and lead this division into the next few years. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, next up, we had the Kingdom versus the Machine Guns for the Tag Team Championship. Um, yeah, I I like the story that we're telling with this match as well. And I love, I, I keep thinking about me time I saw Machine Guns. I, I remember watching TNA back when I first moved here and, and just thinking of like the Machine Guns have been going at it for a while now. And it's incredible to think like still how quick and agile they are, even so many years later. And the pacing on this match was incredible. Um, yeah, I love especially the double team moves between both teams were incredible. I did feel bad for one part because uh, Mike, I think, was holding Alex Shelley, if I'm not mistaken, for Matt Taven to do like a suicide dive and Matt's feet were, you know, mixed on the ropes, so he just couldn't do it. Uh, they tried to still like move Alex to help him out and still do some kind of move on him. But uh, I felt bad for Matt that he just got tangled with the rope, so he couldn't do the move in there. And I just like, I feel like it kind of broke me from like the routine of what the match had been going on. But other than that, I was very entertained. I love having Maria in there as well as usual, bringing those shenanigans to the ring and, you know, being used as the way for them to retain the championships overall. But uh, pretty entertaining match, so what did you think? I mean, I I didn't even pick up on that moment on the ropes as much because the entire story and the way that the match is playing out, I just credited Chris Saban to his, like, master class of tag team mind games and just, how well he was playing the kingdom against each other throughout this match, just outsmarting them at every turn. Just yeah. The timing was fantastic in so many of those spots where he had Taven and made Bennett kick Taven or had Bennett and made Taven kick Bennett and just all of those different, all the way down to the, the finish of the match where he ducked away and made Mike Bennett kick Maria and it was just, flowed so well into everything Saban had been doing all match, but then he just happened to get caught and rolled up and they managed to beat him with Taven using feet on the top rope for the the stolen victory almost, but it, it makes it in a sense like that, the, the misstep that you're talking about of Taven not being able to get his footing on the top rope, it just played all, all the way through as the kingdom's timing was just out of whack the entire night. They had no chemistry no sense of what needed to be happening and just couldn't get together in a cohesive fashion with their partners. Um, Motor City Machine Guns. Those, those guys have done it all and they they continue to do it all on a night-to-night basis. And this match is just, like I said, it, it just put Saban on that next level for me that we saw Alex Shelley and Josh Alexander a couple months ago to Mergens. I would love to see Chris Saban get Josh Alexander for the title here in the future as well. Yeah, I think that would be a good one, too. Um, after this, we got a, a recap of the Hall of Fame, which was Raven earlier in the pre-show after the Digital Media Championship match. Um, and then after that, we had the Call Your Shot uh, gauntlet match. I'm going to lead to you now. Well, I, have to, I forget yeah, the opposite uh, way I for mean, me. I definitely took a lot of notes on the Call Your Shot gauntlet because I tried to keep track of who was doing what and yeah. who got everything out. Um it was what you would expect from a Call Your Shot. It's very Royal Rumble-esque, except for the finish, um, that you get a lot of bodies in the ring, and it's a lot of just spot after spot from whoever's coming down to the ring. Enjoyable in its own right, and some surprises in there as well. Um, we got a surprise right off the bat with Joe Hendry being one of the first entrants in the ring with, with Eric Young. Um, we got Steve Macklin out third. Um, 
we got a run of some regulars. We got Swan, we got PCO, Savannah Evans, Johnny Swinger. Just got to throw it out there. Every time Johnny Swinger's out here, I love his little mini ring that calls me back to the 80s, but it's like a, a one hundredth of the size of the rings that the guys came out in back in the 80s. Um, lots of women in this match, though. Like Savannah yeah. Evans, we got Tasha Steeles, we got. Uh, Killer Kelly was out there. Taylor Wilde was a surprise entry. Mm-hmm. Giselle Shaw. Just a ton of women in this Collier Shot Gauntlet. Mm-hmm. And they all held their own um, with the men that they were in the ring with. Savannah Evans having a stare down with PCO. You had um, Killer Kelly coming out and like choking out. I think it was Macklin she choked out at a point mm-hmm. there. Um, and then like Tasha turning on Savannah and flipping Savannah and Killer Kelly out together to get rid of both of them. Um, Sammy Callahan, you had Callahan, Moose, and Macklin revisiting that feud with all three of them in the ring at the same time. Um, I think the biggest surprise in the match was when Bully Ray showed up. Um, definitely not expected whatsoever to see Bully Ray coming out in this match. Um, and then right afterwards, you got a run with Tommy Dreamer and Rhino where we got to have the ECW reunion in the middle of the ring. Where Johnny Swinger decides he thinks he's an ECW original as well and gets to, to pay the price by flying over the top. And then he's coming out. You got Bobby Fish coming out. And then the other kind of big surprise was Matt Cardona's return to an impact ring after mm-hmm. kind of his hiatus since handing the title off to Brian Myers. Ultimately, the, the end of the match came around really well. Um, the, the Bully Ray and Taylor Wilde stuff with the was up off the top and Taylor, like, crawling up into his arms and half making out with him in the middle of the ring, but then getting taken out of the ring by Matt Cardona along with Giselle. You get down to the, the end, and we ended up with Bully Ray and Steve Macklin as our final two, which I've been saying for months prior to us starting this show that I think Steve Macklin is the guy that is going to be throwing Josh Alexander. So at this point, call your shot gauntlet. We got the surprise return of Bully Ray, and we've got Steve Macklin, who's been killing it for a year plus now. I thought for sure Macklin was winning this match. 100% on board with it when Bully got that that win out of it. I was shocked. Um, very, very surprised. Unexpected. Um, ultimately, the way they've turned it around and the opportunity to see Bully Ray versus Josh Alexander is a match I'm looking forward to. But I still think that I want to see Macklin be the one to take the title. This one, like I said, this was the match that I didn't like the ending for. I was thinking, like you said, this is the way to highlight Macklin, having him take out Bully, and this will be it. And I kept thinking, this is the way of the veteran helping the younger guy in the roster. It's like, why wouldn't I want Steve, who's part of the roster, win the match rather than Bully is coming in like a surprise entrant? But that was just my thought of it. Because I would have preferred Steve to win it and just highlight him in that way and him against Josh would have been better for me. Um, but just the little spots that happened that I loved as well was having, you know, Tasha of all people was really tiny, like I am, facing Bully Ray in the ring and showing no fear to him. I love that moment. And he's like, forget about it. He just throws her to the security guard somewhere <laughs> there. I loved it. Uh, and then having her in that, you know, confronting uh, Killer Kelly as well. Um, I love how they showed like those little storylines. They compiled them in the ring as well, and that was one of them. And the way she eliminated Savannah just to eliminate Killer Kelly as well um, was pretty cool for me. Um, and also like that ECW reunion. That, that was cool for a moment, but I was thinking, I hope none of you guys win because you guys are the older guys. You guys have done probably almost everything. You don't need to win it. And then Bully have to win it. Just <laughs> why? I was like, really? Um and then, oh my God, another part that I thought was really interesting was Bobby Fish came out and the CM Punk chants were super loud just for that <laughs> moment he was there. Uh, I was telling Ed while I was watching, just I lost track of how long Bobby was in the match. I don't think it was too long. But while he was, while he came in, the moment he came out and the music just started, it was the CM Punk chants were so, so loud. Uh, for that moment, he was highlighted up until the next person came out. So I thought that was super interesting that the CM Punk chants are following him up to Impact Now as well. Um, but yeah, I just like would have preferred Macklin to win it because I was thinking Macklin and Josh in the future would have been something awesome to see, like showing their two different styles of wrestling. But yeah, I just it don't be fully ready for what it seems like. Um, I think another one I would have liked would have been Cardona as well because I just having him return, I think it would have been cool for him to win it. But it's, 
I guess it just well, they prefer going with the veteran for the moment. So we'll see how that goes later on. But I feel like this is the only one I was like kind of disappointed with. But it is what Bully, it is. Bully race history and impact. It gives kind of that gravitas to it that he's somebody who's won so much and is a multi-time former champion that it kind of puts some legitimacy on his claim to, you know, test the young new guy in a Josh Alexander. You book him for one of these upcoming pay-per-views in the next couple months. I don't know that I'd want to see this play out all the way to Hard to Kill. I think Hard to Kill is maybe where you bring Maxlin around and have a, a number one contender opportunity where you get Maxlin in for Hard to Kill. Um, but having Bully Ray in this spot, I think, is, is a good way to kind of play out, especially with the 20-year anniversary we're going through now this year, play out a lot of what they've been doing with the historical impact of all of the people who've come before. We got AMW came back at Slammiversary, and we got to see... Christy Hemi announcing matches. We got Gail Kim, Gail Kim popping around. We had Kilo Brown and the Aces and Eights come back for a match. They've been doing a lot of kind of that nostalgia, looking back, kind of appreciating the past recently. And so a Bully Ray match in that sense, I'm okay with. But definitely I would want Macklin to, to be in the scene still, especially given what he's just been going through with Moose and Callahan and what he's been doing with the entire roster for so long now. Um... Uh, you said Fish, you weren't sure how long he was in the match. He was one of the final guys to come out. Uh, by my count, I think he was second last. And then he ended up being one of the final three, though. It was Bully Ray, uh, Macklin, and Bobby Fish for the final three. So he stuck around a little bit. But that last stretch after Cardona came out, it just felt like everybody started dropping like flies. They, yeah. they blew through that finish once all of the entrants had come out. Yeah, and then uh, after that, they show Eddie backstage getting ready uh, and having his wife Aisha with the kids. And just, I liked um, this is something I was discussing with Ed before the show started. And one thing that I liked is I like how they haven't made us forget that they're a couple, even though they're one of the heel and one of the face. And even showing that her as a face, she doesn't agree with what he's doing. So I like how they played that out on screen as well. And just kind of like, I hope you this is the end of it for you, but I'm still supporting you because you're my husband kind of situation, so I like that in, in backstage, how they portrayed it. Um, after that, we had Masha versus Jordan. Holy oh, crap. Boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> and and I'm going to plug this right now because I'm still stoked from last night. Masha Slamovich is coming here, and I'm going to see her live in December against one of our top women that we have here in Edmonton. I am so excited to see Masha Slamovich live. This match she just put on with Jordan Grace. These two women absolutely killed it in that ring. That was one of the hardest hitting, most brutal women's matches um, for a normal rules match, at least. That wasn't anything extreme or no DQ or cage or anything like that. It was just two women absolutely beating the hell out of each other and. I loved every minute of it. Right from the start, Jordan was going right at her, that pile driver onto the apron. Just everything these women did just looked like it hurt. Mm. Uh, I also liked how at the beginning, they, even though I didn't think about it because I'm still kind of going back and watching and catching up on Impact, but I love how they kept portraying this is like Masha's streak is on the line. And I think they should have highlighted that a little bit more when they advertised the match. I feel like they should have done it's like and like a streak versus career kind of thing. Um, because I feel like they should have said that more often. I like that they said it during commentary when she was coming out. Like, she's 16 and all, so, you know, if she loses this, this is it. Like, her, uh, there goes a streak for her. Uh, while also having Jordan in the side, like, she wants to prove herself or somebody like Salma, who, you know, obviously being on their feet and she's doing so well. Uh, but yeah, the, I didn't know how their chemistry was going to be, but it was incredible. Um, it was so hard hitting for a women's match. And I, I feel like even for a match being late in the card, I feel like people are so paying attention to everything that was happening. There was always a reaction to every single move they had. And I love those little details of people paying attention to their matches. And just, I felt like Jordan looked incredible as well. Um, I love the parts when they're like trying to hit each other with their finishes and the other one kicks out and just that kind of frustration they give you in their facial expression was incredible to see. It's like, I feel like no matter what I hit her with, she still doesn't give up. Uh, but Particularly I, when Jordan hit her with that grace yeah. driver, that mm -hmm. the facial expression that Jordan gave yes. there just like, what? Like yeah. that didn't, that didn't do it. What mm -hmm. do I have to do? Like yeah. that was just perfect nonverbal communication from her right there. 
um, just playing that character and playing the story out in your facial expressions. I'm always a big uh, appreciative person when it comes to that. Yeah, I, I love the storytelling they had in the match and they had a better chemistry than I thought they would, to be honest. Um, this was definitely one of my... I, I can't even say I had a favorite match because I feel like every match is well done in, in, in a different way. Uh, the only one that I was disappointed was to call you sharp, but this was definitely one of my favorite like moments of the night. Like They totally killed it. Um, I didn't think Jordan was going to win, but then I kept thinking, you know, we already had, was it two championship matches before this? So that's what made me think. I don't think Jordan's going to lose at this point, but I, it was really well done. I love the booking of this match. This is card in general. I'm going to call it out because this card in general, all of these title matches, like the one match that I probably thought I could have called who was going to win it was the one where the person I thought I could have called lost it. And that was Speedball. I thought yeah. for sure Speedball was winning this match. Both tag matches, both of these top title matches, and even the Collier Shot, who I thought was going to win, didn't it? Everything on this card had that level of unpredictability to it that you didn't know what was going to happen. I don't mm-hmm. think there would be many people out there who could claim that they booked 100% on their prediction card for tonight's card. And I love that about the booking on a show like this, where you can't actually go into a show and say, yeah, I know every match is going to come out this way. And this this was just the best example of it because every single time one of these women hit a big move, I popped for it. I <laughs> actually was sitting here enjoying every single minute of this match when Jordan hit the Grace Driver, when uh, Masha hit the snowplow right at the ropes there. Just everything that these ladies was doing and going for a pin, it's like, is this it? Is this it? And then when Jordan hit that, that top rope Grace Driver, that was a thing of beauty. <laughs> that was... There was no misstep in that. For a move like that, that looked so complex to actually pull off, mm-hmm. she made it look effortless, and the finish was just perfect. Um, yeah. I would love to see these ladies play it back here in the near future. Um, I also would love to see someone like a Killer Kelly get involved with either one of these ladies, mm-hmm. because I think that could turn into just as brutal of a match. Yeah, one thing I also loved is, especially with uh, Masha and Jordan, it was one of those matches that... I never thought in my mind, oh, it's going to be over in 10 minutes. Oh, it's going to be over in five minutes. Oh, it's going to be over soon. Like, I can tell it's going to finish soon. I couldn't tell any 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 bit of it. I couldn't really. And I love that because I, I kept watching it and I'm not thinking, oh, it'll be over soon. I didn't have any thoughts like that during this match. I was so concentrated on what that was happening. Then when I saw the time, I was like, holy crap, look at the time. It just went through without me noticing it. And it obviously lasted more than five minutes. So I really enjoyed it. And like I said during NXT, which is I highlight what they love with the women over there. They do the same thing here at Impact. We had three women's matches and two title matches of those. It's incredible to think that in such a card for a three hour show, three of the matches were, were involved with the women. But we also have like Aisha and Jade, and you know, during the main event that they kept showing them. And we had Maria in the tag team championship match as well. So the women were the being women highlighted the through the high net. Yeah, and the Collier shot too. So they were the highlighted match through the whole the night, night. That didn't have a woman involved was the opener. Yeah, all through but the whole night, the women were highlighted. They they had the three women's matches. You had women involved in the Collier gauntlet. You had Maria taking a bump in the tag match, and you had uh, Alicia Edwards and uh, uh, mm-hmm. the sidelines for the main event. So, hundred uh, percent. If you want to talk about focusing on women's wrestling. This is the program to be watching. This is the show that is doing it right, and they have been for well over a decade now. The knockouts division is top tier. Every woman on the card deserves the spot that she was in and proved it in her actions on the night. Yeah, very true. And last but not least, we have the main event, which is Eddie Edwards versus Josh Alexander for the world title, which is super interesting as well. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know where to start with this match. <laughs> I mean, it it was everything I thought it could be. It it turned into a little bit of an overbooking mess, uh, kind of nearing the end there. But it's what you expect at this point from Honor No More. And they don't do it in such a way that it falls, like I said, on, on kind of the NFW shows where when uh, House of Torture is involved, it's like, ah, uh, again... It's Honor No More doing it. It's in such a way that it's, yes, it's affecting the outcome of the match, but it's not always in their benefit, and it's not always in such a way where they're doing the exact same thing every time. Um, 
in this one, you know, Eddie's battling A for his marriage, B for honor no more, trying to make his statement, make his place. I don't think we're at a point yet where Josh should be losing his title, but this is definitely one coming in where the whole story and the fact that Honor No More has been featured so heavily, you definitely thought it could be a possibility. Um, these two both put it on the line. They both put everything out there. They both kicked out of each other's finishers. You had Eddie kicking out of a C4 spike. You had um, Josh kicking out of the Boston knee party. You had everything going in this match. You had referees getting bumped. You had, you name it, uh, mats on the floor being ripped up and exploded mm-hmm. in hardwood. Like, um, it was definitely main event caliber. I think Jordan and Masha probably was the better match that maybe should have finished out the show. I think the big thing that put this in the spot was the way we finished the match and kind of what came afterwards to close out the show with the tease of Willie or won't he with the cash in and then eventually Bully and Josh turning on Honor No More standing tall, talking over the title. Yeah, I was going to point that out, too. That yeah, Styles absolutely. Clash, oh, my goodness. I loved it. Um, Even just the Styles Clash, the fact of how quickly he rolled it, as opposed to rolling it into the pin, sliding over straight into the ankle lock, for sure. Yeah, I don't know if you felt the same way. This is something that I was telling Ed as well. Um, I The way they kept going back, putting the camera to Aisha and Jade, I kept thinking Aisha was going to turn to Jade and do something to distract Josh in that way, and I kept waiting for it every time they look, they put the camera to them. I was like, why do you keep doing that to me? Nothing's happening between them. It's just Aisha just looking at Jade at the side, and that was it. And I kept ex- waiting for something to happen there re- between all the shots that we had. Um, but yeah, just that was the moment that I was like, maybe now. No, maybe now they'll do something. And then nothing really happened there. Um, but I love how Eddie looking at his family, just like having those moments to like debate about what he was doing because his kids are watching him as well. But yeah, yeah I, I love having the way Honor No More came into it. I'm sure you don't get that distraction as well. And um, at the end with Bully Ray, I was scared. Like I was legit scared. I kept thinking, oh no, it's the most thing all over again. No. And it just they have my heart right there. I kept thinking, oh no, Bamford Glory is gonna be a cursed paper before Josh Alexander now apparently. And I was super scared when I saw him. And it's like they just beat up Josh after the match and they move out of the way and Bully's like, yeah, yeah, we're, I'm gonna do this now. And he's giving his hat to Vincent. And he's like, yeah, I got this. And then, you know, the stare down with Josh, I kept thinking, oh no, it's happening. I, I feel like I was watching it with my eyes half closed just in case it did happen again because I didn't want it to happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I know that it was for that one moment of Bully uh, helping Josh take out honor no more, but still at the end it's showing, you know, I have the championship in my hand now, but we're going to be seeing each other soon. Um, I love what he said. He's like, I'm going to step up, make you step up your game. I'm like, what game? He's already incredible. What does he want him to do? Um, but yeah, I, I love the storytelling in the match. And these two were incredible together. Um, I feel like obviously it's not going to be the end of Honor No More uh, with Josh. But it's still a pretty good ending for the match for me. Yeah, no, they, t- they definitely kept putting it out there. Um, throughout the match, Tom and uh, Matthew both talked about it throughout the match with the wives and the children in the audience, and they mentioned it at one point when they were battling on the outside, how, like, Josh keeps looking at his family for, like, motivation and, like, strength and whatnot, and Eddie almost, like, not even caring that his family's there, not acknowledging them kind of stuff, and the way that they were talking about the way they were playing it out, and the way they built up this match, it definitely felt like Alicia was going to be um, a part of it. And leading up, like, all the way up to Victory Road, even the way Eddie and PCO have been going, I also thought potentially PCO could come out and cost Eddie the match here, too. I think we're possibly heading to a point there where PCO and Eddie are going to come to blows. Um, But all in all, the family involvement was definitely something that I think they had almost as a red herring there. They wanted you to believe it was going to happen, and then when it didn't, you you were kind of like pleasantly surprised almost that Alicia didn't turn and join Honor no more. Um, and yeah, the ending just, I, I wish I would have actually taken down verbatim or at least some like proper notes about what Bully was saying. There, I definitely appreciate just the way he was holding the title up to him. Like, you know what this title means. You know what it means to be champion. I'm going to make you step your game up because you've never faced somebody like me. 
I think I, one of the parts that he was saying is like, uh, do you know who I am? He's like, I don't have to ask you because you know who I am. That was one of the parts that yeah. I thought was interesting when he confronted him there and that part of, I'm, I'm going to make you step up your game. I'm like, Josh is already doing a great job. Just leave him alone, please. But now I'm not going to like having Bully as like the, in Josh's shadow now <laughs> with the after when they call you Sean Gauntlet, but it is what it is. Um, well, it definitely had me nervous too when his music hit. Yeah. I was like, no, no way. He's not going to do this right now, is he? Especially like when he came out and he was sitting in Honor No More, we're like cheering him on for it. I'm like, well, he's not joining these guys, is he? Like, this group's already big enough. We're adding another person to Honor No More, like, what, we want a 10 per Are you doing Bullet Club at this point? Like, we're just going to keep adding people forever? Like, and so when he actually handed off his hat and he started talking to Josh, I was trying to, like, watch the conversation because they weren't actually focusing on the voice. Mm -hmm. And you kind of almost see him say, like, are you all right? Are you ready? Now. And then that's yeah. when they attack. Mm -hmm. I think I think Josh at that moment said, let's do it. And that's when they started doing it uh, and hitting up an uh, honor no more. Uh, but yeah, I kept thinking, well, it's Bump for Glory. Call your short gauntlet. And then the family's right there. It's happening all over again. Why? I was like, I was not happy when it happened last time. I'm not going to be happy if it happens this time either. Uh, I was I was really, really scared. Um, but I'm glad that Josh uh, retained, not only retained the title, but he's still champion after the paper is over, thankfully. It was not the same thing happening as last year. Thank God. Um, but yeah, overall, a pretty good pay-per-view to watch. I was really entertained. And it just to think, like, tonight alone, we had so much wrestling going on. There was SmackDown going at the same time. Plus, we have Battle of the Belts. Plus, this going on. It, but yeah, I was just so hooked. I try to watch SmackDown. I keep gl try to glance at it every now and then. I couldn't because I was so concentrated on the pay-per-view. I lost track of whatever was happening on SmackDown. Um, but yeah, I just... I. I miss talking about Impact and I miss watching Impact. So it's nice to now I subscribe to their YouTube and now I found how to watch it. Be having my blonde moment of the week with Cody earlier this week so I can figure out how to watch it. Um, but yeah, I'm just glad to be able to watch Impact again and just like kind of refresh my mind what has been going on because I, I see clips on Twitter every now and then and on YouTube, but I never really paid attention like I did tonight. But it's motivating me to keep watching it more often and just kind of going back and see what I missed in the storylines and why the storylines are what they are right now. But overall, pretty good paper reel. What did you think? Yeah, no, absolutely. It was a great show. I've been um, kind of flying through a bunch of the, of the stuff in the summer recently and mm -hmm. just trying to catch myself up mentally and prepare for our show now tonight. And it's it's on par with what they're putting on, especially for the, the Fight TV pay-per-views, but even their exclusive events on Impact Plus, the, the booking, the matches, the story, and the in-ring efforts of everyone on the brand is absolutely top tier right now. I don't think Impact Wrestling gets nearly enough attention and respect for what they're putting forward. They're kind of buried underneath the WWE and the AEW of the world right now. We're stuck acknowledging that those two are kind of the top of the focus and the popularity charts, even though Impact is putting on sometimes much better shows. So if this is where we're kicking off from, this is our starting point, Astrid, mm -hmm. I think we've got nowhere else to go but up, mm -hmm. like continuously up from here with the talent they've got. Like I said, just the fluidity of the roster. You never know who you're going to see on any given night. you got your Bobby Fish shows up one night. You've got Bully Ray mm -hmm. coming back after how many years without wrestling a match. You've got mm -hmm. D'Lo Brown showing up on a pay-per-view and deciding to don the Aces, Aces and Aces vests again and actually get physical. And It's just, it's been a fun time to be a wrestling fan all around, but um, I've definitely had a, a soft spot in my heart for Impact for a long time now, and I'm really excited to, to get to do this with you and get to actually um, talk every week about Impact Wrestling going forward. Uh, let me throw it back to you, though. From everyone we saw tonight in all of these matches, we'll, we'll go to the name of the show. Who do you think made the biggest impact? Oh, my word. Jeez, uh, only one person. I'll definitely say Jordan. I feel like I'm not used to watching Jordan because I... I started watching Impact when it was back when Sting was there, and I was able to go to the tapings and the papers here in Universal Studios. So I'm used to like the older roster they had. Uh, so I'm still getting familiar with the new, with people like Jordan and her finisher moves and stuff like that. But I know how she's in great physical shape. By watching her tonight was just incredible. Like her, you know, her agility, her power. I know she's a powerhouse, but being able to watch it live on a paper like this was just amazing to see so i'm definitely keeping an eye on her after this it just she blew me away tonight yeah. 
there there was a lot of stand-ups. There was a lot of great wrestling. There was a lot of people I felt like had a big impact on the show and like really stood out as the the top of the card. And uh, if you want to throw around the pillars, where there's lots of people on this card that are people who should be in the conversation for the top wrestlers on the brand. But in terms of making an impact tonight, I think I have to go with Bully Ray. He was somebody I didn't expect to see on the card. He was definitely somebody I didn't expect to win the Collier shot. And by the end of the night, he had me on board with it. Like uh, It was kind of a turn from not even expecting to see the guy to being like, okay, that's a cool like nod to the past. To, Holy crap, he won. To like, oh my god, is he going to join on or no more? Like, it was just like very impactful return for me, and I don't know how long he's going to stick around. Hopefully he doesn't actually end up winning a title out of this, but I'm really excited to see him in a feud again and back on the screen because I did miss a lot of his big run and impact back in the, like, 10 years ago when he was actually running the show and running the Aces and Aces and that. Yeah, that's one of the parts that I remember watching that I was telling you about that I remember being there for the Universal Studios tapings in that moment with the wedding and everything, the Aces and Aces. Those were the days I was back watching it and being live there and being at the papers. I remember, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, um, when I met uh, Victoria slash Chara uh, in Impact in her time and I think going to like Hardcore Justice, one of the papers I remember watching live as well. So it just, it's feel like it feels nostalgic to me to watch Impact again. It just reminds me of one of the reasons why I ended up loving wrestling as well was because between, you know, Impact and the Knockouts division and the way they highlighted the ladies at the time and the way that NXT was re- highlighting the women at the time when they were starting, it just reminded me why I love women's wrestling to begin with and that's why I wanted to make the show with you more than anything to highlight those women that we've seen like all these matches tonight. It was we have so many ladies through the whole paper is incredible to see. So I just like wanted to highlight that more than anything from Impact. But yeah, the women just they made me fall in love with Impact all over again. Yeah. No, this this is a great way to kick it off. This is a great show. It's an exciting time, like I said, to to be a fan of wrestling and to be a fan of Impact. Lots of great talent on there. We've all got our favorites. We've all got people that we want to see challenging championships, winning championships, being put over. As we see in the comments, Gravy and Stag Cohen both coming out and cheering on Macklin. And we've both said really high things about Macklin now tonight as well. But I, I think we're all kind of coming around on Steve Macklin. Tag him, bag him, mayhem for all. It's the name of the game at this point. It's what we all want to see on the World Championship picture. But there's a lot of other really talented people on this roster, and no matter who's getting those shots, you know it's going to be a top quality match. Even if it is a Zicky Dice or a Johnny Swinger once in a while, they still have the ability to make it an entertaining show. Yeah. Uh, before we go to the plugs, I did want to thank our partner, Ed, for helping us uh, producing tonight. So last minute. Sorry, Ed, but I'm going to put you on screen for a moment and highlight you too. I know it's going to mess up the overlay, but I really don't care. <laughs> um, for the ones that are tuning in that don't know us from before, uh, we used to do a show called NXT on Love Wrestling, and we used to talk about NXT on Tuesdays for a little while. We got randomly paired up, but we ended up you know, getting closer and closer every time we did a show together. So it's nice to be with both of these guys again on screen. But thank you, Ed, for producing another one of my shows. Yes, you did it again. <laughs> thank you very much. Every time, you, every time you talk impact, I'm here producing. I, I know I, I called you last minute on it, but we appreciate you coming to help us out. And we hope you can be around and, and help us out for the Impact Shows going forward. We we appreciate having you around and, and getting a chat with you, too. Always. When I can make a chance, I'll always try to show up and show out. Yeah. Hold up the pillars. <laughs> Hold up. So, now in time for the plugs. Ed, where, the, where can the people find you first? Uh, they can find me at edfries12584 on Twitter. I will be hosting a new show on Ole Pods called Variant Wrestling Realities. And we'll find out more about that on 1024. Yeah. How about you, Cody? You can find me on my Twitter at Cody Defoe. You can find my Twitch at Cody Defoe. I'm not doing much there yet, but I am getting my setup all together. I'm probably going to start streaming a uh, first time playthrough of a game I've never touched before coming up, either. Uh, I think in either The Witcher 3 or Horizon Zero Dawn, you can see me try it out and play through that. We'll be here Thursday nights going forward for everything Impact, possibly Friday nights as well for the big four shows throughout the year. Check out, come back, check it out with Astrid and I. We'll talk all things Impact Wrestling. 
Yeah, let me let me think about mine. No I'm kidding. Um, no, I got Tuesdays uh, taking over the Chris Parish on his on his Twitch, so you can find that on my Twitter as well. And then I'll be here usually on Thursdays uh, doing making an impact with Cody. Uh, and then uh, pretty soon I'll be launching the Ladies Wrestling Showcase with Mel, who was in the comments a little bit earlier. We're going to be highlighting women's wrestling, which obviously we're going to end up talking about impact somehow as well. Um, and my interviews, Astrid asked, are going to be once a month. I'm coming back soon with those. And on the weekends, I do the women's wrestling talk review for NXT. So you can watch out on their socials for that. I'm <clears throat> sorry. And then earlier today, I did a panel about Hispanic Heritage Month with them. And we're going to be doing another one next Friday as well to highlight and close out Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, which is super exciting to do. I, I love talking about my culture and where I come from. So it's exciting to do something different uh, when it comes to wrestling media. But yeah, it was really fun. I'm glad I'd be able to do this with you again. We haven't done anything on screen in quite a while. It feels it feels longer than six months. You get a, you know, I'm sorry. It feels longer than that. It was but, a long summer. I yeah. mean, everything's been really slow moving lately. I uh, also just want to shout out Yum Gravy, Stag Cone 15, Melball Call, and Zach Kennedy. Everybody who's joined us in the comments, thank you very much for joining us. I know it's late night, depending on where you are in the country right now, but we appreciate you coming out. I'll be earlier shows for the Impact shows on Thursday nights for sure. We'll go live right after it's finished at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Mountain. So check us out there. Uh, we'll keep it consistent and constant and hope to see you back. And definitely share what, when we're posting on the socials. If you're following us on there, share it around. Invite any of your friends that also enjoy Impact. We'd love to see more people here joining the discussion. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us and have a good night.